Hello everyone. In this video, we will answer the question, what is the cardinality of GLN over FQ? So for this proof, there are a couple of prerequisites. Be sure to let me know in the comments if you would like a video for the proof of any of these prerequisites, but let's go through them. The first one is you should know what GLN over FQ is. This is the general linear group over FQ. It is the group of invertible n by n matrices with entries in the field FQ. So this is the finite field with Q elements. And of course, the operation is just normal matrix multiplication. Second, we should recall that an m-dimensional FQ vector space has cardinality Q to the m. Third, any linearly independent set in a finite dimensional vector space can be extended to a basis. And lastly, the column vectors of an invertible matrix form a linearly independent set. So on the surface, this looks like it might be a group theoretic question. And while I'm sure there does exist a proof that is more heavy on the group theory, the proof will be given today focuses a lot more on the linear algebra approach. Uh, in a future video, we will be computing the cardinality of the special linear group over FQ, and that one definitely is on the more group theoretic side. So what's the proof? Proof. Let's start by considering some arbitrary matrix in GLN over FQ. So consider M arbitrary. So again, this is an n by n invertible matrix. So then we can think of M as columns being made of vectors in FQN. So we can think of this as V1 vector. And when I write T, I mean transpose. So it's n by n. So we're going to need n vectors. And each of these columns, so where v i is in f q to the n. So we can think of this similarly to maybe r2 or r3, where we're just taking tuples of elements in our finite field. And this is for 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to n. So notice, because M is in our general linear group, uh, then M by definition is invertible. So M invertible implies that if we take the vectors that form its columns, so V1 through Vn are linearly independent. And I will be abbreviating linearly independent as L dot I. So on the surface, it's uh, kind of strange. Why do we care about writing our matrix like this? But here's the idea of the proof. So idea, we will build possible n by n matrices in GLN over FQ and count how many options we have for each N. So this is our idea and let's formalize it. So if N is equal to one, then M is just a singleton, it's a one by one. So then we have M is equal to V1. And further, we know this is invertible. So if we just look at the vector V1, so this is a linearly independent set. So we have a singleton vector the only thing this cannot be is the zero vector. If it were the zero vector, that would not be linearly independent. So this is where we're going to use prerequisite number two. There are q to the n minus one choices for v1. So again, this just comes from the fact that V1 is an element of FQ to the N. So there are Q to the N elements. And the only one we cannot have is the zero vector. So we just pluck it out of the set of choices we have. So this is if N is equal to one. 
Now let's consider, okay, let's try to build a two by two matrix. So fix V1 and consider M equal to V1 comma V2. Then again, we need to have that V1 comma V2 is a linearly independent set. But this implies that V2 is not in the span of V1. But remember, so V1, this is just a single vector in F Q to the N. So let's think about it this way. So notice the span of V1 is a one dimensional FQ vector space. So what does this mean? Uh, from prerequisite two, we know that the span of V1 has cardinality Q, just Q. So we want to pick V2 such that V1 comma V2 is linearly independent. So there are Q to the N and similar to how we did when N equals one, we're gonna subtract off what we cannot have. So we noticed that there were Q vectors in the span of V1. So Q to the N minus Q choices for V2. So if we continue building our matrix like this, So let's say we have given V1 through Vn minus one fixed and such that the set V1 through Vn minus one is linearly independent. There are Q to the N minus, and now we're taking out vectors in a n minus one dimensional fq vector space. So qn minus q to the n minus one choices for vn. And this is a vn that would make uh, m our n by n matrix in gln over fq. So putting this all together, we have the cardinality of GLN over FQ is equal to, this is the product from I equals one to N of Q to the N minus Q to the N minus I. And the reason for this is we have, like we said, Q to the N minus one choices for our first vector. And we multiply that with the number of choices we have for our second vector times the number of choices we have for our third vector and so on and so forth. So this completes the proof. And we've shown that the cardinality of GLN over FQ is this product from I equals one to N of Q to the N minus Q to the N minus I. In our next video, we will compute the order of the special linear group over FQ. So this is a set of N by N matrices with entries in FQ that have determinant equal to one. And in that video, we will be using more ideas from group theory rather than linear algebra.